so I've been studying how to take sunlight and convert it to a fuel because at night when the sun goes down you don't have any more energy so if I could use the sun during the day to make a fuel then you could burn the fuel at night and when you burn the fuel at night you could power your house and one thing I've been studying is water splitting because if I can use sunlight to split water you can make hydrogen and that's something that's very familiar especially to Italy because they've always appreciated the value of hydrogen uh, and so to have water as your hydrogen source that's renewable the way the future is now going is you'll be seeing more and more hydrogen but that's coming from methane that's called steam reforming and that hydrogen is dirty hydrogen because when you get hydrogen from methane you make CO2 so if you can get hydrogen from water, then you get clean hydrogen. Uh, it just doesn't come out of water, so you need an energy input. And if you use sunlight, you can store the energy of the sun in the rearranged bonds of water to make hydrogen and oxygen. And then that whole process is something that leaves do. That's photosynthesis. That's what really happens in photosynthesis. The hydrogen then gets fixed with CO2 to make carbohydrates. But the key step in photosynthesis is, taking, is for the leaf to take sunlight and then split water to hydrogen and oxygen. And many years ago, I won the NE Prize for the Tell Gas slash NE Prize because I developed catalysts that could make hydrogen. What we've done since then is we've gone way beyond that. And what I... in the original discovery you could imagine having your photovoltaic and that would catch sunlight and then you take wires from the photovoltaic to the thing I discovered which is called the catalyst and then you use sunlight through the wires to split water to hydrogen and oxygen but whenever you start wiring things that gets expensive so the latest thing we just invented less than a year ago was taking these catalysts we invented and then coating them onto silicon. And that means now silicon is at the heart of a photovoltaic. That's what absorbs the light to generate the electricity, which you put in wires. By putting my catalyst right on the silicon, now when the light hits the silicon, the the silicon gets charged or charges the catalyst without any wiring. So why, and that's what we call the artificial leaf. And so that discovery is our latest, the artificial leaf. And the importance of it is you just take a piece of silicon and you just apply coatings. And when you're just taking a piece of silicon, it's like making a sandwich. You take the bread and then you put the meat and then the cheese and then the bread. And so it, it's literally like making a sandwich. As the silicon's coming by, you just spray the coatings in layers. And so you can get to very high throughput manufacturing of a device that now when you drop it in water and just hold it up to sunlight, you see you start splitting water to hydrogen and oxygen. So the real key of the latest discovery of the artificial leaf is to do it without wiring and to just use coatings. And so to take the catalyst we invented and interface them directly with silicon to do water splitting directly. And that's called direct solar to fuels. The original discovery was indirect because sunlight came in, you convert it to electricity, and then the electricity makes the fuel. Now we took out the electricity part. It's just sunlight in directly to fuels. And so that's called the direct solar to fuels process. So energy poverty at Rio 20 is a good one because in the next 40 years, there'll be 3 billion new people born into the world who need energy, and there's 3 billion low energy users. So in the next 40 years, you're going to have 6 billion new energy users, and a lot of them are in the poorer parts of the world. 
And so if you want to make the most direct impact in energy, in my opinion, you need to get energy to the impoverished world. And the key there is because people are poor, they don't have money. And so therefore, most of the things discovered in our world are capital intensive. They take money. So the real key is, can you come up with inventions that are going to be super cheap? And that's where the artificial leaf gets interesting. Because you're only doing these coatings, I can do high throughput manufacturing by just laying coatings on. I don't need to do a lot of intricate wiring. I don't need a lot of intricate circuitry. Whenever you need wiring, you need circuits, that all starts costing money. So the question is, can you do what we do in the, dev 